Chapter 5, The Definite Integral, 5.3, The Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, Part 1. Your objective for this lesson is to evaluate integrals using the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. So, the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, um, you're going to see in two parts. The first part, you'll see in this first video, says that if f is continuous on the interval a comma b, then the function uh, big F of x equals the integral evaluated from a to x of f of t dt um, has a derivative at every point x in a comma b and df dx, so the derivative of our function is equal to the derivative of the integral which is equal to f of x. which means that we can conclude that the derivative of an integral is equal to the function evaluated at x. Example 1, find d dx of the integral of cosine t dt evaluated from negative pi to x and d dx of the integral from 0 to x of 1 over 1 plus t squared dt by using the fundamental theorem. Okay, so this first part here, I'll do in blue. Remember our fundamental theorem tells us that the derivative of the integral is equal to that function inside the integral, so cosine, but evaluated at our upper limit. So this is cosine x is my first part. Okay, um, second part I'll do in green for you. I'm gonna have 1 over 1 plus, instead of a t, I'm going to have an x squared. That is all I had to do. Example 2. Find dy dx if y equals the integral from 1 to x squared of cosine t dt. In this case, you'll see that our upper limit right here is not an x, but an x squared. So that means that y is a composite of these two functions. So y equals the integral from 1 to u of cosine t dt and u equals x squared. So we're going to use the, wait, wait, chain rule. Use the chain rule. Yay, chain rule, we've missed you. Okay, so dy dx is what we're looking for. And this is going to equal dy du times du dx. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to say is let's find the derivative mm -hmm. of our integral. So d du from 1 to u of cosine t dt times du dx. Okay. And this is very easy to find. So we have a u up here. So our derivative, we're just going to plug in the u for t. And we get cosine u times whatever our derivative of u is, du dx. OK, but u wasn't in the original problem. We said u equals x squared. So I'm going to take this and substitute it down below. So I have cosine of x squared times the derivative of x squared is 2x. OK, so my final answer is 2x cosine x squared. So that one was a little bit harder. 
But really, once you know where you're going, that wasn't too bad. From here to here, that wasn't too bad. Example three, we want to find dy dx for part a, y equals the integral from x to five of three t sine t dt. Okay, but here's the problem. In order to use the fundamental theorem, my x needs to be on top. So that's not really too bad to fix. I know that I can switch my upper and lower limits if I change the sign of my integral. So I'm going to make it negative. Um, I'm going to take the derivative also. So d dx of negative integral from 5 to x, 3t sine t dt. And now that I have this negative, I'm going to kick it out here. So negative d dx of my integral. And I know that to evaluate this integral, I'm just going to take my x and plug it in for both of my t's. So that gives me 3x sine x, but I can't forget about this negative out in front, so I need to put a negative there. And I get negative 3x sine x. Part B, I still want to find dy dx for this function. So y equals the integral from 2x to x squared of 1 over 2 plus e to the t dt. And you'll notice that this integral is a lot different than the ones we've looked at. We have an x on both the upper and the lower bound. Um, we don't really want that. We can only evaluate with the x up top here. So we're going to have to break this up. So d dx of parentheses, I'm going to say the integral from 0 to x squared minus the integral from 0 to 2x, okay? And usually when you break, well, the reason why this is um, a minus is I put my lower bound from before on top, so I had to flip that over instead of going 2x to 0. So I flipped the bounds and the sign became negative. Um, so now we're going to evaluate each of these to find the derivative of both of them. And like before, I have an x squared up here, so I'm going to use chain rule on this first one. So you can look back and see that we found the derivative not the derivative, we evaluated um, this first function, you plugged in your u, and you found the derivative of what u was. So we're going to do that again. So my first integral, this becomes 1 over 2 plus e to the x times the derivative of x squared. So times d dx of x squared, and I'm going to come back to this in a second, so I know that that is 2x, so I'm going to put that right here. Okay, now minus, I'm going to put my 2 in for t, so 2 plus e to the 2x times, I'm going to have to do the same thing here, the derivative of that exponent, not exponent, my <laughs> upper bound. Mm -hmm. So the derivative of 2x is 2 minus 2 plus e to the 2x. 
And this should have been x squared in here. Okay, and this is my answer. Not going to try to simplify that anymore. <clears throat> Example four, last one for this video. Find a function y equals f of x with the derivative dy dx equals tan x that satisfies the condition f of 3 equals 5. The first thing that we're going to do is use the fundamental theorem of calculus to write a function whose derivative will be uh, tan x. So y equals the integral from 3 to x tan t dt. So you see here when I find dy dx, I'm going to plug in that x for t and I'll have my tan x. Right now, if I plugged in a 3 for my, um, my x value here, then I would get 0. So right now, y of 3 equals 0 because my integral would go from 3 to 3 and that would give me 0. So in order to make this a 5 instead of a 3, I'm just going to add 5. Okay, so my integral, if I plug in my 3, will have a value of 0. Remember, that's your 0 property add 5 and I get y of 3 is now equal to 5. Okay, and that is really it for that problem and for this first part of 5.4.